So yeah, Water UCI came together about five years ago. A group of us around campus had a conversation and decided that it would be great to create some kind of an institution where people could communicate and share ideas about water. And in doing so, we could bring different schools and departments and different disciplines together to actually address California's water problems, which as we know are increasing. Uh, our population is growing, drought is going to become probably more frequent and intense, and we have to be prepared and resilient. So we work in three domains, research, education, and public outreach. And in all three of those areas, we're very interested in helping Californians become more efficient in water use. We've done research on issues such as climate change in California, drought, uh, the connections between water and energy, and how to save uh, our resources in both areas, which is very important to increasing efficiency. In terms of outreach, we work with local water agencies, including Irvine Ranch Water District, on public workshops to help people learn how to better save water in their homes, and especially outdoor landscaping, which is where most Californians use most of our water. In education, we have a number of uh, efforts working with public schools, Probably the most exciting effort we have is with middle schools here in Orange County to actually work with students and teachers in teaching water conservation and in coming up with very innovative projects uh, regarding the best and most efficient uses of water. And of course, middle school students, boundless imagination, they're uninhibited by uh, you know, the way things are supposed to work, so they come up with really great ideas. So most of the innovations on the technological side regarding water, or probably most natural resource issues at the university take place within academic departments, particularly uh, the School of Engineering, Physical Sciences, other related schools. Where I think Water UCI helps is to bring those innovations to public light. And we do it in a couple of ways. One is we have a colloquium series uh, where we bring people in from around the country, including UCI, and talk about these innovations that can help us save water, can help us use water more efficiently. We had a recent talk, uh, a scholar from Israel talked about how Israel is using various water innovations that could apply to Southern California and the successes and the not so successful things that have occurred in these innovations. I think the biggest thing that Californians can learn from Israel is that desalination probably works best and most efficiently if it is seen as part of a larger or more holistic approach to water supply management. In Israel, desalination came about largely out of, uh, I would say, almost desperation. Uh, it's an arid country, uh, heavily urbanized, and doesn't really have much access to fresh water. And desalination came about as an urgent effort to try to provide water for cities. But what Israel does is the wastewater that comes out of the urban uses of the desalinated water, then goes directly into a process of wastewater reclamation, which is used for growing food. And on top of that, they also have very aggressive conservation programs. So desalination isn't seen as a panacea or a, 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 a solution for everything, but it's seen as part of a network that connects uh, one water supply option with another water supply option with another set of uh, demand alternatives. So these water issues are huge. They're interdisciplinary. So you have people working in water law. You have people working in engineering to treat the water and make sure that it's safe to drink. You have people working to make sure the water supply is robust. So when we have a drought, Southern California doesn't run out of water. They have a water portfolio. We've got desalination and water reuse and stormwater capture and groundwater and imported water, right? And so in order to effectively manage the resource and make sure that it's safe and clean, 
everyone needs to participate. So the utilities that are treating the water, the legislators that are making the laws, uh, the community, especially in terms of conservation programs, you know, watering lawns less or installing um, different kinds of uh, equipment on their house to reduce the total amount of water that's used. So it's really a group effort if we want to tackle these problems. And so we really need to get everyone at the table if we want to do that. So I'm working right now a lot in water reuse, which is taking wastewater, so domestic or industrial wastewater, and then running it through very advanced treatment using reverse osmosis and UV light to break apart contaminants. And you're actually ending up with a water that's cleaner than traditional drinking water. And so Orange County is a leader in that area. Orange County Water District operates the largest wastewater recycling plant for potable reuse, which means drinking water quality recycled wastewater. And that's being injected into the aquifer in Orange County. And so OCWD, Orange County Water District, has really led the field in this respect. And water recycling plants for potable reuse in the country are following this model. And so, uh, you know, my work is basically looking at uh, making sure that water is as safe as possible and that we're removing those contaminants. So we drink water, we use water in our home, uh, we use water to generate electricity. Um, it's a precious resource that has been traditionally underpriced. So people are very used to paying very little for water when in fact it's a very valuable commodity. And we're starting to see that now when we see things like drought and contamination that limit the amount of water that's available. And so, um, you know, it's a very important resource that, you know, maybe people uh, underestimate the significance a little bit unless they sit down and really think about how impactful it is in their daily life.